we will uh, start with the introduction to electrodynamics and this is a bs level course we will follow the dj griffiths book completely and the edition that we will be following is the fourth edition now this is very important to know that where electrodynamics stands in physics like what's the role of electrodynamics in the overall physics so let me discuss some realms of mechanics there are actually four realms of mechanics you know that when we study physics we study the mechanics of a body we study the state of motion of a body so here inside the mechanics the very first one that we start from the very beginning is the classical mechanics and classical mechanics you know that it started from uh, the time of galileo galilei he was uh, the first one who did formulated some uh, uh, mechanics and like this is from galileo galilei but the actual formulation or the complete formulation like laws of motion they were formulated by newton isaac newton and this mechanics is also called is newtonian mechanics now you know about the laws of uh, mechanics uh, they this mechanics is for the macro bodies is for the large bodies or big bodies we know the laws of uh, motion like the very uh, you would call it the newton second law of motion zeroth law of motion then the first law of motion the second law of motion third law of motion the one which you call the zeroth law of motion is that there is no absolute rest the first law of motion a body at rest will remain at rest or in motion will remain in motion uh, in the absence of an external force second law of motion you know these are actually the first second they are written is f equals dp over dt the rate of change of linear momentum is called force now we write the newton second law is f equal to ma but that is not right f equal to ma is just a corollary of this law and here if you see the very first law if f is equal to 0 then the momentum is constant so it means a body will be moving with a constant velocity if mass is constant if because this p is the combination of two like m v mass and velocity and all the mechanics that we are studying are actually based on mass and velocity classical mechanics when there is a considerable mass that is which we can very easily measure our big bodies then and speed the usual speed we can actually uh, easily measure this one so this is equal to m dv over dt and plus v dm over dt like the product rule when mass and velocity both depends on time then the first function derivative of the second and then the second and derivative of the first we usually take this mass is independent of time that mass is not depending on time so this thing is equal to zero and we write this m dv over dt the rate of change of velocity you call is 
acceleration. So this is F equals MA and you call this is the Newton second law of motion. It is a corollary of this thing. Now when force is equal to zero and a body is there but force on this is equal to zero then A is equal to zero. A can be zero in two situations. Either a body is at rest or a body is moving with a constant speed, right? In that situation, not only speed but velocity, with a constant velocity, because we know that velocity is a combination of both magnitude means the speed in direction. If speed remains constant but direction changes, then there will be some acceleration. Acceleration will not remain zero in that case. So this is what, in the absence of force, a body will move at a constant speed or it will remain at rest, right? So this is the first law. From here, you do this thing or from there, you can have this thing. There was third law of motion, then there are some planetary laws of mechanics like the Kepler laws. You are having some other treatments of the energy conservation equation, the total energy equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy and this you convert into Lagrangian and Hamiltonian. So that's another treatment of the classical equations. Here, all this mechanics, here we are having both M and V. M is a considerable mass, while V is the usual speeds. Now, when the mass goes down, like we are moving to the smallest particle, the tiniest particle, then those tiny particles we cannot deal with with classical mechanics but we deal them in quantum mechanics. When particles become very small, although their speed is usual, but when they become very small, like M goes down here, you know the electron mass and the proton mass are the very elementary particle masses they are much, much lower compared to the ordinary mass, like electron mass is 9.11 for minus 31 kg. And this is really very small mass. And I can write that mass of electron is 0.1234567. If I write this in scientific notations, then it is not very clear. But if you write it this way, and you write 30 zeros and after 30 zeros you write 911 and it is this much kg. So there are 30 zeros in front of this one. It is this much small mass. When the particles become so small, then it is very difficult to differentiate between them to differentiate between them where, whether they are a wave or they are a particle, right? Because they become almost continuous. And this is the reason that another mechanics came in and that mechanics actually explains these things for the very tiny particles. Let's say, let me give you an example. When you are going on in a subject, in a physics, and that physics fails to explain something, then you go the other ways. And what was the problem here? The problem was, let's say, the very really in the founders of quantum mechanics, let me first consider Bohr, Neil Bohr, and there was an issue in the issue of hydrogen atom. We know from classical mechanics that when you accelerate a charged particle, then that charged particle will emit 
radiations. Their charged particle will emit electromagnetic waves when acceleration is non-zero. No, accelerate or decelerate is the same thing. Just you can say in one you go up, in another you go down, like addition and subtraction. So it is all addition. When ex there you accelerate a charged particle, it will emit electromagnetic waves. Of which frequency it's another matter. It depends on the acceleration. But when people were looking at the hydrogen atom, inside a hydrogen atom, you know that there is a positive core you call the nucleus and electrons are going around this. No, electron is a charged particle and this electron is going in a circular motion means the motion is accelerated motion acceleration at any point is directed toward the center the electron feels or any body when moving in a circle it feels that someone is dragging it towards the center and that's why you call the, the acceleration is always directed towards the center so it means it is an accelerated motion it is a charged particle which is accelerated so this electron should emit radiations photons electromagnetic waves energy but the situation is not this one electron is not emitting radiations in Neil Bohr for the first time said that electron will only emit radiations when it will go from any higher orbit to the lower orbit or it will absorb radiation when it will go from the lower to the higher orbit otherwise going in a accelerated motion it will not radiate now this is contrary to the classical physics but this is in accordance with the model in accordance with the quantum mechanics and that was the reason that he remained amongst the pioneers of quantum mechanics another name here another name here is Heisenberg you know German physicist and he is the he is the founder of quantum mechanics. Now, how he came into it? You know the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which is considered as the basic principle of quantum mechanics. So, Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Now, what in this principle Heisenberg said? You consider wave like electromagnetic waves. They are considered as continuous, like the wave theory of light. They are considered as continuous. Huygen was of the idea of wave theory, while Newton was against the wave theory. He was of the opinion of the uh, that thing was like the particle theory and he called the particles is corpuscles. When Max Planck was explaining the black body radiation, Max Planck, you know about his constant H or H bar, don't call it H cut, this is H bar edge bar you know it's a very very small magnitude it's approximately 10 power minus 34 joule second so it's a very small magnitude here so what was the issue the issue is that whether you consider reflection refraction transmission and diaphragm scattering all these phenomena a dispersion they are explained with the help of wave theory so what is what if i consider this for example you see the same wave in the form or uh, through a microscope you see it 
with a transmission electron micro, you zoom it. So if you zoom it and it is just like composed of tiniest particles, then you cannot differentiate between the wave and the particle because the particles are so tiny that like in black body radiation, it, they were considered as the packets of energy which you call, which Max Planck called as quantum or quanta. So they were not continuous. They were discrete packets of energy, but they are just like waves. So when you go to that very, very small scale par particles, then the particles behave like waves or the waves behave like particle. And the work of de Broglie is in front of you. Material waves, lambda equal h by p, that wavelength is related to the momentum. P equal h bar k. That was the work of de Broglie. So de Broglie said that when the particles become very tiny, then their associated wavelength is contributing. There are waves associated with the particles. Material waves are de Broglie waves. So those waves are associated with the particle and the particle just behave like a wave. Now whether waves can behave like a particle or particle can behave like a wave, this bridge was covered by de Broglie. So when you consider very tiniest particles, then those tiniest particles, the difference between those particles and waves is very, very small. They behave like the same. And that's the reason Heisenberg said that when you switch from the particle nature to the wave nature or from the wave nature to the particle nature, then what compromise will occur? What uncertainty will occur in your measurement? And that uncertainty was the de Broglie uncertainty principle. Like you are switching in from one into the other. And that is the sigma x, the uncertainty in the position multiplied with the uncertainty in the momentum will be greater or equal to h bar over 2. That he derived is the uncertainty in your measurement. Now this uncertainty is so small you see h bar very very small magnitude but for the tiniest particle this does matter for the big objects it will not matter but for the tiniest particle it will matter now let me explain you this thing in very simple words like the uncertainty principle like uh, your cr name is musa Musa is now a classical particle and I know there he is so I can easily locate if Musa start going I can easily say that Musa is now going so it's his momentum is will is position is very well defined both at the same instant but now Musa mass is decreasing and he is becoming the tiniest particle. So a wave, the associated wave that he is having is no contributing, is no considerable. And he is so tiny that now like a wave, if he is very tiny, he behaves like a wave. And if I how can I say, where is the wave? Now, Musa is a very tiny particle and just like a wave. So, I cannot say this one is Musa. Now, Musa is, you can say, represented by his wave nature because his wave contribution is now very evident. And in this one, you cannot say this is Musa. Now, he extends from one point to another point. But if I will say, that this is Musa. It means I am considering him as a particle. When it will be a wave, you cannot say that here it is. If you say here it is, then location is defined. This will become uncertain.
right? This will be no more accurate. When you localize a wave, then the momentum become uncertain. And when you uh, when you find or uh, find out the momentum, then this one the localization is no not in your hand. So that's the reason that when you switch from the wave nature to a particle nature or from a particle nature to a wave nature, some uncertainty will occur. The switching in and switching over will cause some uncertainty, right? And that was the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. If you want to see more details of the uncertainty principle, then in quantum mechanics, we have recorded a complete lecture on the Heisenberg uncertainty principle with the help of equations with the help of the plot we are explaining this thing so you can uh, see it over there I am just briefly saying it here that it is nothing more than the switching in or switching over from one nature into the other nature and then another name which is here in the quantum mechanics who did the actual formulation was was Schrodinger and that's why is New Newton is called the founder of classical mechanics you can call this Newtonian mechanics so this one is the Schrodinger mechanics or the quantum mechanics let me give you a very brief history of uh, his work